Rates of early onset dementia and Alzheimer's disease amongst Americans younger than 65 basically has doubled between 2013 and 2017, according to data from Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Mitch Gen, the Chief Medical Officer at Hue Light USA, and this is a daily dose with me, Dr. Mitch, a Hue Light web series. Well, let's get into this a little bit. The average age of someone between 30 and 64 years with either young onset dementia or Alzheimer's is 49, with women being disproportionately they're affected. Well, this is based out of a study published in JAMA Neurology, a major journal, which identified 15 lifestyle and health risk factors associated with early onset dementia. And this was analyzed from over 356,000 people younger than 65 in the United Kingdom between 2006 and 2010, which means it probably even got much worse since then. Now, the major contributing risk factors pretty much everyone is aware of includes alcohol abuse, stroke, even hearing impairment, which you may or not be associated with, but people that don't hear as well, all have these risks for cognitive decline. But there's something very interesting. There were other factors that stood out, including social isolation, inflammation, postural orthostatic hypotension, all previously identified as risk for cognitive decline. And there is another one that is so important, which is vitamin D deficiency. Now, researchers found in this that vitamin D supplementation had a 40% lower incidence of dementia compared to no supplementation. Moreover, they they were seen if supplemental supplementation began before the onset of symptoms, it actually did a much better job, not after. So let's sort of summarize this, uh, this article. Let's make sense of it and let's see what the takeaway is. How do we prevent early dementia risk factors? One, so obvious, avoid alcohol. They also felt that social isolation was a significant factor, which means you should have friends. It's good to have one person or two in your life that can help you sit with you and talk with you. Many studies, including the longest run study, the Harvard interaction study shows that as well. And so certainly if you don't have any, you know, think about places and things and other types of activities that you can do, whether it's church groups, synagogue groups, whatever that you can, you know, avail yourself of so that you can get that nice social and supportive interaction. The other is a look at inflammation, which they also saw brain inflammation or inflammation in the body in general. Think about it. If there's inflammation that's occurring within the arteries, that inflammation is going to also occur in the brain simultaneously. Well, the way you check that, there's a couple easy tests. One is a simple, very inexpensive test called a sedimentation rate. We call it affectionately the SED rate, S-E-D rate. And that basically just gives you an overall body if there's any inflammation that's somewhere in the body, not specifics, but somewhere. I always do on my folks, C-reactive protein high sensitive. That's a low grade ongoing inflammation in the vascular system. And that of course is a problem because the vascular system, you know, talks from the brain to the toes. Can you deal with that? Of course, naturally changing your diet, some exercise or natural things like boswellia, as well as curcumin that can be added to your regimen that will help decrease inflammation. By the way, even before we get there, vitamin D has also been shown to decrease inflammation. I mentioned earlier the POH, postural orthostatic hypotension. That's people who basically are sitting for a length of time and then stand or laying down and stand, what happens is they get dizzy. This is a dysregulation of the autonomic nervous system and it's easy to be tested. Unfortunately, not many physicians have the proper equipment to be able to determine its actual 
presentation in somebody. And then instrumentation is called an ANS, Autonomic Nervous System Test. And you should look around, or if you're not sure, you're welcome to write us and we'll make sure we find someone in your area to be able to do that. But that too needs to be very heavily addressed. There are certain natural items that can address it. And typically it's caused by one of the elements of the autonomic nervous system, meaning the parasympathetic. Remember the sympathetic lying chasing you? Parasympathetic says there ain't no lying anymore. Well, this will tell us exactly where the issue is. And there's simple things that you could do prior to any medication or even supplementation such as walking in the grass or walking in the beach, singing, humming, put splashing cold water on your face, meditation, and deep, slow breathing exercises. And of course, vitamin D, and the whole point of this, which shows uh, how important it is, is making sure you get enough vitamin D. The only way to really know is to get a blood determination. If you're below 60, in my opinion, you're not at the right place. The body utilizes 4,000 units a day, whether you take it or not, it needs that. And only five to 8,000 tends to maintain the blood level you're already out. So if you're taking, oh, I take 5,000, 2,000, 8,000, it may never go up properly or accordingly. And of course, you may need 10 to 20,000 and you may need other things with it like vitamin K to stop calcium from being placed in the arteries. And that's a discussion with your healthcare practitioner. And we'll do certainly one of these on that particular subject as well. And last but not least, molecular hydrogen. Molecular hydrogen has been significantly able to not only reduce inflammation, improve um, pastoral hypotension, but also to help the brain reorganize, redevelop, and actually recreate health. So the combination of these type of therapies, along with even molecular or infrared, near infrared therapy, in combination with all of these, reduction of alcohol, getting some friends and spending time with your kids or someone you really enjoy being with, re making sure you have no inflammation and or vitamin D deficiency by checking the blood. And that's an easy and simple and inexpensive test for those of you who don't have insurance. And then this ANS, which is an inexpensive evaluation as well, that makes the whole difference in knowing whether that important system called the autonomic nervous system, which does everything for you when you're not conscious of it. More coming, I'm sure. I'm Dr. Mitch Gen, Chief Medical Officer for Hue Light USA. Thank you so much for watching.